I'm Eileen, and today I'm here to draw some textures with you all. So textures are things that we use in drawings to make the picture a little bit more believable. You're going to need a pencil, paper, eraser, pencil sharpener, and colored pencils if you choose. And so I wanted to show you a few things I have here in the studio that have texture. So when I talk about texture, I mean the way things feel and look, all right? So this is something you could probably guess what it is. It's a pine bough. And not far away from a pine bough would be this pine cone that's kind of prickly, actually very sharp, but it has a texture. And going through my recycling, I found other things that have texture, like this produce bag. It has a nice texture of a weaving. And here's another one in green. <laughs> Put that one away. And here's something you might have um, around the house. It's a bubble wrap. So this has an interesting texture too, kind of like polka dots. And the last things I have here, how about this guy? This has a real texture that, um, well, you wouldn't want to touch it. It's very pointy. But we're going to draw this today, too. And here's another example of texture. It's a wire here that um, if we take a piece of paper, and this is a fun thing to do, is to go around your house and find things that have a texture that you can rub the side of your pencil over and see how it looks, All right? So that's kind of a fun thing to do. But the other texture that's on this box, this happens to be part of something that we built for our garden. But you'll also notice the texture in the wood. So there's a wood grain here. Anyway, there's so many textures. So when we draw things, we want things to look um, realistic. So we're going to practice drawing some textures today together. So I'd like to show you an example of something similar to what we're doing today here. And this is a pencil drawing using different textures to fill my fingers. And the way I did this was I put my hand on a piece of paper, spread my fingers out very wide, and then I trace around my hand to create areas for five different texture drawings that we're gonna do today. So, let's get started. So we're going to start again this is a landscape today landscape format so that you can fit your whole hand spread out including your wrist and we're going to trace around that with a pencil it can be a little loosely make sure that you hold the pencil straight up so that you get a nice big fat finger shape just loosely around. And I'm gonna put my wrist down so that it goes right off the paper and you'll end up with something like this. You can even see where my ring was. So I can fix that if I want to. Or keep it on, who knows. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're looking at various textures and um, before we start to fill this in, I wanted to show you this figure of different textures. So you can see this on your screen. 
there are all different sorts of textures that artists have used. There are horizontal lines, there's the crosshatch, circles, dots. Um, this is a crosshatch with more crosshatch, double crosshatch, diagonal lines, slanted broken lines. Here's something that looks a little bit like wood, circular scribbles, alternating lines, and so on. There are all sorts of lines that we can do with our pencils that create texture. So let's start practicing on our hand that we have here. Okay, so the first one, I'm going to put out my reminder to see where we're going here. Uh, the first one's going to be crosshatch on the little finger. So let me show you what crosshatch looks like. Crosshatch is lines that go one direction and then they cross like a T, like that. So there's a little example for you. Hopefully by now you've had your hand drawn and so we're going to start filling in. So I'm going to start with this little finger here and make straight lines. If you want to make them curve a little bit, that's okay too. They don't have to be perfectly straight. We're crosshatching by drawing straight lines. They don't have to be perfectly straight. They could be a little wavy to look like fabric. They don't have to be all the same width. And you can use the point of your pencil or press hard or press soft. And you can leave a few little strings down here. All right. So there we have the first texture. And this was crosshatch. OK. Next, we're going to go to the next one. And I believe we're going to practice scales. So scales are kind of a, I'll draw a little square here so you can see what they look like. They're a repeated U shape. Goes like that. And then a U shape that starts in the center top of the last U and goes like that. So do you see how I'm kind of um, ending my pencil mark in the middle? of the little under part of the U. It takes a little practice, but this texture is really handy if you're drawing fish or a dragon. So now I'm going to put that pattern inside this finger just for fun. So our goal is to have five different textures. So after you've practiced it, you can go a little faster wouldn't it be fun if we could change the texture of our skin depending on whether we feel like we're a chameleon or a cactus? So go slowly. You don't have to go too fast on this. The scales could get bigger as they go up your finger. It's starting to look like scales. <laughs> Uh-oh. I started in the wrong place, but that's okay. Maybe it's a bigger scale. No worries. It's kind of hypnotic in a way to draw these patterns. Some of our textures are actually a pattern, aren't they? 
Okay, so we've got our scales on this finger. And if we want to make it look like it's 3D, we can shade one side with the side of our pencil, position number two. Okay, I can do that on this one too. There we have scales. All right, so the next one, let me remind myself. Ah, yes, wood grain. Okay, so wood grain is um, kind of, there are little circles in places in the wood. And then the lines of the wood move around those. So you'll see it a little bit better when I do it on the hand part down here. So we're going to set into the wood a few little circles where maybe there was a branch or something coming out of the wood. So it's kind of a knot. And so with our pencils, the goal is to kind of avoid those and go around them. When we come back, we're going to avoid that and maybe come back on this side. Come around. Avoid that little oval that we made. Come back around and follow that parallel line. Here's another one we want to avoid. So it's kind of like one of those games where you're trying to go around something without touching it. But can you see how it's starting to look a little bit like a wood texture? And you can put some more lines in there and make a little knot. So that's our wood texture. It also looks a little bit like a topo map. <laughs> and we can make that one 3D by shading the same side with the side of our pencil. Okay. The next one's going to be like our friend here, the cactus. See, so you can see how the cactus has little spines that go up through the cactus, has a fuzzy little top, and these little things that poke out of these little dots. So I'm going to keep that in mind. So I'm going to start with making the spines for my cactus texture. And you can do this along with me, or you can play the video over again and stop and start. Right? So I have the spines of the cactus, and now I'm going to create some little dots along here, along the spines, and that will be where the spines, the little prickly things come out in each spot. So I was looking to see whether they all come out equally. Not always. Almost looks like a dot to dot drawing now, doesn't it? And we're going to put some on the edges. I wonder if you have a cactus at home you can look at. So then when we have these little spines, I'm going to sharpen my pencil because I want a nice sharp point for this part. Pardon the pun. So my pencil is nice and sharp now so I can make the little spines that come out of these little polka dots. Sometimes they face upward, I think. Is it starting to look more like a cactus yet? 
So these we're looking at directly. Maybe you can draw the cactus that you have at home. It might be a little different. Anything you can find to practice is a lot of fun. Or any of your house plants, like in the winter time when you can't go outside. If you have some house plants, those are kind of fun to draw for practice. And of course, there's these nice little spikes up at the top. And same as with the other drawing, we're going to create a little shad shadow shading on this side with the side of your pencil. And also in between each spine, in between each spine of the cactus, there's a little valley. So we're going to put a little shadow in the valley in between. You could do this with colored pencils, and that would be fun. And we've got a cactus. So we've got four textures. I bet you could name some other textures. So this one is the cactus. <laughs> and then this one was wood. We forgot to label that one. The last one, let's see, what was it? Ah, uh, yes, I think it's fur. So with fur, when we draw fur, it's good to start at the bottom of the fur, down here, and it's little kind of hash marks. And then we keep drawing those little hash marks going from the bottom to the top. You could go the opposite way too, but it's fun to start at the bottom. So I'm going to start at the bottom of my thumb here, and this is my furry thumb. And I'm going to start down at the bottom with some dashes. You want it to be like fur, and you can have some sticking out the side. Then I'm going to do the same thing, one more layer. So it's really kind of like the way fur grows, right? There's layers underneath layers. And if you have a cat or a dog, they would have hair that lies in a certain direction. Although maybe you have some kind of a doodle dog and it has curly fur. Then you're going to have to add curls to them. So this is my monster hand, my thumb. And make sure there's a few pieces of fur that stick out on the sides. You know, I think it was Picasso said that art is a lie that tells the truth, all right? So it's not a photograph, we're drawing. So you're just trying to make people believe that they're seeing something that wasn't there before, right? So there you have your fur. You could, again, shade that a little bit if you want to. And if you're using colored pencils, you can use, you know, create the kind of fur for any sort of animal. All right, so um, there's still lots of parts of your hand. And if I look at my hand this way, I can see there are lines in my hand. Sometimes they're like fortune teller lines. Sometimes um, people name these. I'm not sure which heart line, life line. I don't know. I'm not getting into that. But I'm going to use those lines to kind of draw some sections in my hand here. And I think there's another one that goes this way. And we'll create a bottom. So you can look at your hand, too, and create some more sections. You can practice some more textures in here. So for example, maybe I want to make bubbles or circles in here. So you could fill each area of your hand with as many textures as you can find. And you could 
go back and look at that s slide earlier for some more examples. Um, how about something a little different? So we saw the cross hatching before, but what if we wanted to draw something that looked more like a oh, chain link fence or something? Yeah, hold on one second. <laughs> That's not a good sound. No, but we are right next to the airport. So I know. Could be That's the anything. first thing I was thinking. No, not another fire. Yeah, well, I guess light storms tonight and tomorrow. All day today is the watch. We had a little rain last night. Yeah, Did you have some? Four yeah, I went outside. I was so yeah. excited. Um, yeah, not, not down by us. Okay. A little more? Whenever Ready? Yep. Okay. So this next texture is a lot like the crosshatch, but we're going to cross kind of diagonally. And I'll show you what I mean. So the stripes go this way. And now we're going to make them not straight, but kind of across like an X. So do you see how that creates little diamonds, diamond shapes? So creates diamonds. So that's another effect you can get. If you're drawing something and you want to show there's a fence. All right. Um, let's see, what were some other ones? Oh, let's try some water wavy lines. So this is kind of a water looking line, but it also could be, if you put them together closer, it could be hair, right? Or any sort of thing that's wavy. And what are we going to put in here? I'm going to let you decide. Can you think of a texture that you could put in this part of the hand? So I look forward to seeing what you're doing. I wish I could be there with you and see all your different textures. So next time you're thinking about drawing something, don't forget to add the texture. See you next time.